give of a podium for a speaker stand. At least that time, I don't know. Try to use the shaking hands. Try to accommodate the people. Let your words be heard. Let your words be digested. Let your words be lived.
I chose for three verses, which may be coming from different chapters, but anyway, they are related or connected to one another.
before I'm feeling anybody in the Lord's eye. So I will be touching some of your Facebook, your Twitter, or your LinkedIn, whatever it is. So, ano pa mga sinasabi natin unwholesome or rotten language? The first one, taking the name of our Lord God in vain. This is the third commandment of the Lord. It is so sad that still some of us take the name of our Lord God in vain, especially when we are surprised, we are caught unaware. You know, I am not saying that I'm not doing this. At times, I still am able to say, oh my God, right? And all of us can, can you know, are, are susceptible to this. We, we, we see this. But because God is holy, and we should not forget that, let us try our very best to think of other works that would express our surprise. All right? Not, oh my God. Trivializing terrible life realities. Ano po ang trivializing? Yung pinapasimple daw po, pinapagaano, pinapaliit ang isang bagay na napakalaki. Like for example, God's holiness. God's name is holy, it is hallowed. And yet there are people who are saying, holy cow, or holy mackerel. What is holy in a cow and a mackerel? Right? And we see this in Facebook. Damnation, hell, these are big things, and yet we treat them like, like, you know, hell no. Yeah. That is an unfortunate Referencing sex and the body of the world. I will not say the words, but it is very popular. It is four letter words. Augustine was quite famous in the, in the golden era. 
on his big, big table, dining table, may nakalagay po doon na isang poster. If you are going to talk about someone who is absent from this dinner table, you are not welcome to eat my food. I think all of us should have that poster, not only about our dining table, but on our walls. It is not good to be talking about a person, especially bad about that person, if that person is not in front of you or not in your presence or in the room. That is not right. All of these are bad words. According to James, he said that with our tongue, we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. So from the same mouth came or come both blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be this way. Kung tayo daw ay fully Christians na, why should cursing and blessing come out from the same mouth? Dapat po, wala kong cursing. Blessing lang dapat tayo. So what are the implications of this unwholesome language? Bakit kung dapat tayo hindi magsalita ng ganyan? Number one, it does not nourish. Do we know the meaning of nourish? Yes, we eat food for nourishment, right? Why do we have, we have carbohydrates, we have the proteins, we have calcium and all these uh, vitamins and minerals. These are the, the things that nourish us. Bad words do not nourish. It will probably make you sick. Baka sumakit ang chan at pumunta sa CR 10 times every hour. It makes the environment unpleasant. It gives a bad reflection of the speaker. Yeah. This is very important. Sabi sa Luke chapter 4 verse 43, No good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear fruit. Matthew 7, 17. So every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Kaya kung minsan, we cannot avoid judging. Pag may narunig tayong bad na nagsalita ng bad word, we go back. Eh, yung tatay at panay kaya, siguro, nagsasalita din. We go back. We tend to think that way. We tend to go back to where the child comes from. Or maybe, that's the way they are in their home or in their family. So it gives a bad reflection of the speaker. So your language tells you who you are. Maria, the weapon of the wicked is foul language. So if you are using foul language, you are wicked. This is according to Imam and Imam. A foul tongue reveals a lot more about you than the one you are using it against. Pag nagsasalita daw tayo ng foul language, ang nakakarinig sa atin, mas nakikita ang ating personality more than the person we are talking about against. And lastly here, a person of dignity would never use obscene language. Go, sorry, kung gusto mo po na ang image or personality na ipinaproject mo sa tao ay isang dignified, isang mabait, isang mabuting Christian, then never use obscene language. Because obscene language, that will give the opposite image. So, with what I have been describing to you about bad and foul and rotten language, my message this afternoon, I thought it would be best to title it with, Is my mouth a fountain of life? Why did I choose fountain? I, cho I chose fountain because it's summer. I find it refreshing when I look at it. But later on, 
I will explain to you why I chose Tom. So is my mom, or you can ask yourselves, is my mom a fountain of life? Paul, when he was talking to the Ephesians, was trying to shift our mind to another thing. Who si Paul po sa kanya nga sinabi niya, Beware of a rotten language or a wholesome language and speak only good words. Kung sinabi po yan ni Paul, tapos na po ang after seven days after. But Paul did not say that. Paul wanted us to have a liberty or a change of mind and heart to his words. Why am I saying this? Sabi po ni Paul, beware of unwholesome language. And we must say it according to a person's needs at the right time, so that the grace will be given to those who hear. So Paul is changing our state of mind from the words that come out, but, um, sorry, not from the words that come out, but from where the words are coming from. He's no longer taking a look at the words that come out of our mouths, but the motive, the reason why you're saying those words. He is now changing from the exterior to the interior. He is now changing from the fruit to the root. So that is the thing for the statements to start with. So when you talk, or when I talk, I think it's worthwhile to ask. Is our mouth a means of grace? Is it giving life to others who are listening to these words? I have found four verses in Proverbs and one in Psalms that will picture this fountain of life I'm talking about. Psalm 36.9 For with you is the fountain of life. In your light you see light. Proverbs 1622, understanding is a fountain of life to one who has it, but the discipline of fools is calling. Proverbs 1427, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, that one may avoid the snares of death. Proverbs 1011, the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but the mouth of the wicked conceals violence. And lastly, Proverbs 13, 14. The teaching of the wise is a fountain of life to turn aside from the snares of death. There are so many verses in the Bible regarding speaking with grace. I would like to comment, since Moose, thank you very much for posting that one. We have every day we post on Facebook our prayer points for the day. That was on the third day when Sis Moose pointed out all the very, very beautiful verses regarding speaking with grace. Now let us move just a little bit from the fountain to this one. Nice tree, huh? Yeah, nice tree. Let us imagine that this tree is us, you know, your life. I, I, I just got this one from the back. I've been saying about us being a fountain of life. We can also be a tree of life. But how is it that our speaking or our language is related to what I'm talking about? What is the bottom line of this? What is Paul's exact reason for giving us this verse? I found out in Proverbs, and then he is really wanting us to go back to the very basic, the very, very basic how we can speak with grace and how we can become a fountain of life. It all starts on the root. It said that all wisdom comes from the fear of the Lord. Isn't it true? That is the root. If we are fearing God, we are okay. We are okay. We should be more than okay. 
Now the fear of the Lord that I'm talking about here is not the human fear, which we feel whenever we see spiders that we run away. Or there are people who are afraid of the dark. You know that. So turn on and light. There are people who are afraid of speaking in front. Hindi po yan ang fear na pinag-usapan dito. Ito po ang fear wherein we stand in awe and wonder at God's majesty, at God's wonders, at God's creation. Ito po yung fear na nafeel natin, na natatakot tayo that we might, we might stray away from God. That we might be released from His loving arms. Ito po ang fear. Kaya po, from the very start, establish po natin, natin dito that we must be rooted to God. That is the start of everything. Fear of God, that is the root of everything. And as we have this fear of God, every moment of our lives, we grow and our trunk grows bigger and sturdier and we become wise and lovely. The wisdom, the trunk of wisdom, which makes us, which makes us in our daily lives spread out our righteousness. As we gain wisdom, tumutubo rin po ang ating branches, remembering that the big vine is our Lord, and the branches of righteousness spreads out. And from these branches of righteousness sprout the fruits of life, the fruits of grace. And one of these fruits is our words, our language. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ni Paul na bumalik po tayo sa basic, this very, very foundation. Kung may takot po tayo sa Lord, kung tayo po ay lumaki sa kanyang wisdom, nagtakot po tayo ng kanyang salita, at sinasabuhay po natin ating ginabasa, eventually po ang ating buhay ay magiging righteous. Not self-righteous, but righteous in His eyes. Rooted in God. And eventually po, tayo ay magiging big, beautiful. Okay, I'll go back to the fountain. I just love fountain. You love to buy more, right? Fountain. Okay. Uh, Colleen, you love the fountain, right? I would like you to think about this a little bit. This is a fountain. Can you see what this is? It's a factor. All right? Now, aside from the two words starting with an F, ano pa po ang similarity? Alam nyo sa fountain at factor. Ano ba? Family? Yes. That's one thing. Non-stop working. Di po ba fountain ganun din? Non-stop. Sa factory, ganun din. May iglalo. I took this from Bangladesh. This is a garment factory in Bangladesh. Okay, what am I trying to derive out? Ang fountain may lumalabas na tubig. Okay, that's the product coming from the fountain. Sa factory, a product may come out of the factory. It could be clothes, steel, bulbs, whatever, food. May produkto pong lumalabas. All right? But when you think of a factory, what comes into your mind? Because it's loose, non-stop working. Ako po, I, I, I can imagine sweat. I can imagine shouting. I can imagine ordering and command like movements here and there. Noisy. Right? Yan po ang pumapasok sa ating kasil when it comes to factory. Pero po, pag na narinili ko ang fountain, I sense freedom. I sense, uh, I'm sorry, I sense wholesomeness. I sense easy and smooth coming out of the water. I sense even grace. Di mo ba? Sa Dubai Mall.
words in life. They're either poison or fruit. You choose. So, be very careful what you say. You can say something hurtful in 10 seconds, but 10 years later, the wounds are still there. Can you relate both? So, dapat daw po mag-inga tayo sa sasalita natin, deliberate man, o pinag-isipan natin, o hindi. I have a Christmas ball here. Gold. 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 I plan to cast this on the floor, just to give you an image of what I'm talking about. Unfortunately, Mitchell is durable with a break. <laughs> um, that's why I did that now, you know. You didn't know what I was about to do, right? This is, yeah, this is, this is what I'm saying. Hindi ko alam ang nasa isip ko, hindi ko alam ang gagawin ko. And that is true with, with what we do, or what we, what happens when we like to say something. All right? My plan was to let this break. I was, I was lucky enough to uh, scratch it, all right? But this was very shiny when I took this from home. My effort of doing like that is like you or me saying bad things. And this is the heart of a certain person, maybe my daughter, all right? I succeeded in breaking this, for example. Today, I succeeded in just making some scratches. I can say to this Paul, I'm sorry. Or you can say to that person who you hurt, I'm sorry, can you forgive me? This ball will forgive me for sure. I can still hang this ball on my Christmas tree whenever I want. That person you hurt can forgive you. But do you think that the broken heart of that person will still be the same? This ball is no longer the same. It has crutches in them. Yan po ang epekto ng ating foul language, which we should be very, very careful of. If forgive man kayo ng taong na hurt niyo, but that heart will never be the same. Very serious. Kind words, according to Mother Teresa, can be short and easy to speak, but their echoes are truly endless. So, going back to our verse, I'd like to point out, Paul said, do not let anyone, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may then be Now these are now the most important points of, in my message today. So we have to use words that edify. What is the meaning of edify? Edify po, to build up. Ito po ang mga wholesome words na. Maganda na po ang dapat atmosphere natin. All right? So these are the words that instruct and improve spiritual. Ito na po yung mga pinupost natin sa Facebook na mga, na mga sayings, you know, sinishare natin ang, ang mga verses. The good experiences we have had in our daily lives. Yun po ang mga pinupost natin. Mga pasasalaman. These are uh, the, the words that edify. Words that enlighten and uplift. Words that construct, words that motivate, that inspire, that encourage, and eventually, words that lead. Sabi po dito, we are to converse in such a way that our words become a vehicle and demonstration of the grace of God. May kwento po ako. Si Mr. Marion Ash daw po, at may kasama siyang old man, nagpipinta na kami lang farmhouse. The States Ang aking mga American Americanized. Anyway, 
Mr. Martin Ash is an old man. It was a warm summer day. May may uh, ladder had done. So he, he got the help of his neighbor, an old man. Well, they were, before they, they continued the painting, before that, they went into the house to have something to drink, water, drink, you know, because they were feeling hot. So while they were about to go up their ladders, came a young boy, nine-year-old boy, with um, no right hand, one hand. Okay, he was riding on his bicycle. Mr. Ash, Mr. Ash, my mama told me that you are painting today. How would you like for me to come by and get a can of water for you to have something to drink? And how did I get Mr. Ash?
A sphinx vacation means that I must consider the people to whom I'm speaking. I must make an assessment of them, and my speech and conversation must be appropriate for them according to their needs and situation. May isa daw kong catering manager. Pagkatapos ng party, na isang baptism, christening, na isang bata. Itong catering manager na babae, pinutahan yung mag-asawa. Sabi ng catering manager, doon sa babae, Wow, madam, it seems like you've lost a lot of your pregnancy weight. Kasi yung sexy sex na sa nanay. Bigla kong umagis yung nanay ko. At naiwan yung tao. Sabi ng catering manager doon sa tao na lang. Bakit po ang tabi ka rin si madam? Sabi ng tatay, it's because you have adopted. I'm not 
name of you guy. Bill Robert. Jesus stood down on the ground, wrote something on the ground. It didn't say anything yet. How many of are any? Jesus was calm. What is the other thing? Three things. He had compassion and I forgot the other one. So, when we are asked, just like Jesus, and he be our model today, during that time, Jesus was quiet. Because at that time, he was maybe communing with God the Father. What am I going to say about this part about the prostitute? You prostitute not, not enough uh, convicted, right? Can, can you do then Jesus stood down, a symbol of humility. He did not have to that. He stood down. And then, wonder of all wonders, how did he grow Warren? He wrote on the sand. So you please say at LinkedIn, at Facebook, Puso na sa panahon ni Jesus, nagsulat na siya. Ang wala ni Jesus ay sand and the, the ground. Right? No one knew what Jesus wrote. But however, it could be something about the sins, yeah, the Pharisees, or whatever he wrote. But Jesus did that two times. Kasi pinupelsa siya ng Pharisees na magsalita, na makakakonvict sa kanya. Eventually, after the second time, Jesus said, let that one who has no sin cast the first stone. And then, eventually, pakasari ni Jesus doon, isa isa na si Alisan, yung mga, mag-umisa sa elderly, hanggang sa pinakabata, hanggang natira na lang, hanggang natira na lang, si Jesus at yung prostitute, si Mary Magdalene. Jesus said, has no one cast stone? And sabi ni Mary Magdalene, none, Master. Sabi ni Christ, Master. That is the very thing we have to emulate. When we are going to say something, and especially if we are not sure of anything, think twice. Think twice. Contemplate. Think about it. What will you say? Will it bring healing? Will it bring grace to the person? So, wholesome language is a choice. Here, imagine yourselves, mga nanay o tatay kayo, ha? Okay. You have an eight-year-old son or daughter, all right? Listen to what I will be telling you and try to find out what feelings I am invoking on you. Can't you do anything right? What's wrong with you? You will never learn. You are always breaking something. Oh, let me do it. How could you be so stupid? Why don't you act your age? Why can't you be like your sister or your friend? Shut up. I wish I never had you. na may ka, may isa kang eight-year-old na anak, sasabihan mo ng kanya. Di po ba ibang emotion? Ano po, ang aking pinagagawa just now, I was just reading these words, but I added a little bit of tone and volume in it. Nangyayari po sa ating dito. Araw-araw, simple words can be changed in meaning and in effect, with just an addition of a volume or a tone. Lalo na po sa mga anak natin. Lalo sa mga batang bata pa. We have to be very, very careful with words, with tone, and with volume. Kahit po sa Facebook, hindi narinig, nakikita natin ang volume kung nakakapitalize na ang mga words. Nakikita natin kung ano nakitsura ng tono pag may uh, asterisk, my question mark, my exclamation point, my period, period, period. That is the whole meaning of writing those. Meaning that the person who's writing is confused, is angry, is hating someone, or I don't know. Now, ta-da! Listen to this. You are the same mother. You are daughter, our son is eight years old, you are very good at that. You are really 
working hard today. It's okay. We all make mistakes. Way to go. Now you have figured it out. That's what I call a fine job. You handle that very well. Good thinking. What do you think about? I'm very proud of you. Iba po ang pinapakitang epekto. Pag ang pagsasalita natin ay nasa tamang tono at nasa tamang tono. Lalo po, mga, mga bata. Ito po, I'm, I'm particularly um, interested in the last line. What do you think about? Bakit po dapat sabihin niya ng isang nanay sa isang bata? That means, ini-include mo sa decision making at isang bata. That means we are respecting the dignity of even a child. Okay? We are giving importance to our children. So sabi po dito, kind words are sweet to the soul. So we have to speak kindness, we have to speak sweetness, and we have to speak love. Yeah. Love. Kahit so I love you, alam niyo po ba na it can be given so many different ways. Nagpigyan ko lang ng isang salita, ano ba, trial ko lang ito. Sasabihin ko, I love you, sweetheart. Adi ba ka ganda? Most beautiful. I love you, lang. I love you. I love you. I love you, pala. I can say many more. I mean, you can think of many more. But again. Beautiful words, love and I and you, it can be restored. Depending on us. Ngayon po, napakaseryosa kasi ninyo, yung mga katabi ninyo, na may asawa or friend or whatever, sabihin nyo nga po, look at the person you are, and say that, yes, I love you, yes. Pag na-focus yung camera, nagkikis sila. Matay na tapos ni Don Pleo. Ano yung mga audience? Mga audience. Sandy. 
得，听得。哎，得，得，得。干明顺的，干明顺。